All right, this short video will include some sanding strategies for finishing your soapstone carvings. Um, here I have some of the tools that I've made at home, fairly simply with um, adhesives such as super glue, rubber cement, spray adhesive. I have paper uh, folded up with sandpaper wrapped around. This was hot, um, a glue stick an old paintbrush with paper wrapped around, super glued, and a um, blending nub stump here with paper as well. Um, and then I have my uh, provided sanding papers, a stone here that I'm working on, which I've already gotten up to about 400 grit on this. Uh, you'll wanna have a towel down, not only to uh, wipe your stone uh, free from the dust, but when you get up to 400 grit, um, you have the ability to use water with this paper going on up 400, 800, 1000, 2000, whatever it may be. Now this paper is formulated to be able to ho hold itself together with the use of water. When you're at 180, 150, 180, 200, anything below 220, uh, typically these are paperback and these will not hold up with water. So you don't use water uh, 220 or lower. I have a brush and um, a cup of water here that I use to apply the water very easily. Um, I'm not trying to dip my paper into the water or anything like that. I'm just using a, a, a brush to apply that. And I'll go back over with the 400 since I have it here. Now technique for sanding can be done uh, really any way that you prefer. I am um, prone to doing these cir um, circles. Um, it just, uh, for me, prevents um, a consistent uh, linear scratch going on. The higher you go in your sanding paper, the more you're going to reduce the visible scratches on your stone. So if you don't do any sanding, expect to see scratches and tool marks. Um, that's really not acceptable for this assignment. I want you to at least go up to 220 and remove those tooling marks. I have a sample board here. I'll show you when I apply linseed oil to the stone so you can see what it's gonna look like, if you, where you sand to, how well you sand, and then once you apply that finish. Um, so with the wet sanding process, you will be building up a slurry. You can see this on the stone. You can see it on my paper. Um, and it gives you some sense of lubrication to move the paper around. When it gets too dry, it becomes tacky, so you'll wanna provide more water to keep this a wet surface as you sand. I've already done 400 pretty well on this. This stone is rather soft, so it is making a lot of, uh, of the slurry that comes off on the paper. That's the stone, that's the stone mixed with the water that's making this paste. So as you work, uh, you'll want to wipe that off, get it out of the way so the towel can wipe a lot of that off. And then you'll want to rinse off your stone, check out the status of your, your scratches here before you move on to the next step. Don't do it so automated that you don't take time to look at it. So I'll try to get a good angle here. Um, so I can see it's looking really nice. It's super smooth. At 400, it's smooth. You go to 800, you go to 1000, it's going to be silky, which is really nice. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move up the chain here. I have a piece of 800 uh, smaller pieces. These higher grit sandpapers, you're really not gonna wear them down uh, with such uh, small sanding surfaces here that we have on our little totems. Um, so a little, a little piece, you'll notice your 1,000 and 2,000 grit sandpapers, they're pretty tiny, um, but you don't need much. I just fold mine over again and work in circles, sanding. I'm, you really gotta focus on the surface. You gotta look at it, you gotta pay attention. It's not one of those things that you can just, you know, put on Netflix and blindly kind of sand this at this stage yet. You still are looking for areas to clean up, especially if there's some tool or scraping marks on there. The higher in grit within your sanding paper, the less work you're gonna have to do. You're gonna remove these scratches systematically and. In my 800, I shouldn't have to spend as much time as my 400. In my 1000, I shouldn't have to spend as much time as my 800. So it gets easier as you get started. You wanna make sure that you do a good job 
starting with the 220 or lower, otherwise you're gonna have scratches deeper down in your stone and they may not be evident until you get up to 800 then you're going to see those scratches in there and if they they aren't your taste if you don't like them if they're ruining the aesthetic of the piece the only way to get rid of those is to go back down you have to backtrack that down the ladder and start all over at 150 180 200 to remove those scratches so this is looking really nice as a surface at 800, it's even smoother. You can see with the light there, how reflective that surface is. Um, so this is going really well. Now at 800, I'm gonna go ahead and stop with using water to sand. My next stage in paper is 1000. So at 1000, I'm actually gonna use the oil and I'm gonna start to polish the stone. I'm using the oil as my buffer. It's gonna work into the stone and I'll be smoothing around with the sandpaper. At 1000 grit, you're really not removing much stone anymore. Uh, you're really just buffing and polishing. So before I get into the oil, because I've gotten the stone wet and it's saturated and soaked up the water, I'm gonna clean it up really good. You could uh, even rinse it under the sink uh, but then you need to let it dry. You need all of the water to evaporate out of the stone before you apply your oil, because water and oil aren't gonna mix very well. So this may take a little bit of time. I would say in today's session, you want to attempt to do all of your sanding. Uh, again, work in stages, start at 150 or 180 if you need to, if there are scratches, if there are areas that you don't like. Um, I guess you can see in this dry example here, um, at this end, I have not done much sanding, maybe 150, 180, and I'm gonna see if I can get closer so you can see. There are still scratches and tool marks and rough cuts at this stage. This will not look good once you put the oil on, um, and you need to go higher than this for your finished project. Here in this range, we have about 180 going into 220 about right here. So this is the bare minimum you're gonna wanna do. You can still see some lines and some scratches. It's not all that bad, but you can see a huge jump at about right here. This is where it goes up to 400. So from here to here is 400, and you can see in the stone that you're getting more clarity. It's really starting to come through, um, and it actually has a little metallic type of a reflection here. At this point right here, it's moving on to 800. So 800 on through here is where I'm at with this example. Um, you can see I made these uh, marks, but I have more sanding paper than I left section. So I had to add it up. I really wanna get to 1,000 here in this last little section so you can see what it looks like when you really take it to the next level and polish it up. So my next step will be to let this dry. This had water on it too. Let these dry completely until they don't look wet anymore. And then I'll go ahead and get some oil out and do some wet uh, oil uh, polishing with that thousand grit. And I'll show you what those look like in the next video.